All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shati from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. And I found this article on uh, the Common Sense Show. And it's talking about the number one cause of stroke. And it's completely treatable. And uh, this stood out because I have a friend that's in the healthcare industry. And he tells me different stories about how today a lot of people are struggling with stroke, high blood pressure, and heart attacks. And they're not the elderly or as he calls them in the medical field, geriatrics. But he's saying that a lot of the people that he's picking up, male and female, but particularly male, uh, they're in their 30s. 33, 34, 35. And they're starting to experience symptoms of stroke, high blood pressure, and chest pain. You know, and it's one of those things where, you know, We we all know as the scripture says that uh, we will eat our, our our bread defiled amongst the Gentiles and we'll eat poison and live and the earth is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. But but even with that, you know that that was three scriptures. I don't know where they are, but that that is in the Bible. But uh, you know while as, as men of the Lord. You know, we still have to try our best to do what we can to stay healthy, you know, and that's all part of, as the scripture says, you know, presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Because as granted, that's, you know, going out and doing this work, but you need to sacrifice certain things that you like and what you put in your system so your body can be healthy enough to go out and present your body as a living sacrifice spiritually, okay? Uh, bodies as a living Because like I said before, we all know that this, these, this food, the water, it, it's just garbage, but we got to do the best that we can. And in the few times that we do get sick, you know, we need to... Uh, Let me put sacrifice at the end of that so it knows. Okay, Romans 12 and 1. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the power that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. Okay? And, and part of that living sacrifice, as I said before, is doing what you can to keep your body as healthy as possible and then by some chance when you do get sick you know find pray first of course and then try to look for certain uh holistic remedies to cure yourself now some things do you well, you may have to go to bad uncle esau for occasionally but you should try your best to stay away from that stuff because you know what they do with those uh all those medicines they put all type of madness in there but without further ado i'm gonna play this video and uh bring out some more scripture in the end we know that our medical system is inferior. We know not because of the training of the doctors and nurses and the EMTs and other first responders. We have the very best in those people. But what we have is a hopelessly corrupt system that saves money by denying care and it costs lives. So increasingly, we're left as American citizens to find answers to our health problems and act accordingly. And occasionally here on this channel, we want to bring you that information so you can make wise choices. No, I'm not a doctor. I'm not dispensing medical advice, but I'm going to cite a research study today that's going to talk about the number one cause of strokes 
and most importantly, what you should be doing about it. Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host of The Common Sense Show. We are the show that is freeing America, one enslaved mind at a time. We are brought to you by Health Masters. Find out why Dave Hodges, Doug Hagman, many of our friends in the alternative media go to Health Masters long before we ever go to our doctor. True remedies lie in Health Masters. Go to healthmasters.com, use the coupon code DH5 to take 5% off. The number one cause of stroke in America, according to several research studies, is sleep apnea. And if you have sleep apnea, the researchers are saying it's like taking 10 years off your life after the age of 55. Now, why aren't we hearing about this, and why aren't we screening for this, and it's completely treatable? How many people have sleep apnea? Well, an estimated 12 million people do. But it's completely treatable. I have friends that are being treated for it, and they are lowering their potential risk for strokes. Why aren't we doing this? Well, I'll tell you why we're not doing it. We serve a medical institution, medical people, that make money by denying care, and then they make money on the demise. And if you believe in the ideas that what they write, they mean, that they want to see a reduction in the population by 90%, well, you have another motivation at work here. Now, am I saying that for this particular broadcast? No, but they say it themselves in their own writing. Ladies and gentlemen, get checked for sleep apnea when you're 55 and older. Even if you're 45 and older, isn't it time to know if you're a risk? Take the steps you can take to increase, in a healthy way, your lifespan. That's it for the Common Sense Show. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share this on your social media. We'll see you back here again next And so there you have it, you know. And sleep apnea can be caused by many things, okay? Uh, obesity, uh Uh, that's usually the, the, the biggest one, obesity, but it doesn't necessarily always have to. Uh, it could also be smoking or just something genetically that you might be predisposed to or just might naturally happen because of you, okay? But, you know, with that is one of those things where the things that I just named some of those, other than the fact of it being hereditary, you know, there are certain things that you can do to prevent yourself from getting to the point where you have sleep apnea. For those of you all who do not know what sleep apnea is, I guess for a lack of a better phrase, it's when you go to, you, you have a condition where, I guess for lack of a better phrase, you stop breathing. You know, uh, this usually happens when, or you might go a long time without breathing. That's probably the best way to put it. You go a long time without breathing. Okay, and I, I've heard from, uh, you know, different men who have it that, you know, they're sleeping next to their wife, and their wife will look over like, is this dude breathing? And then they shake him, they're like, what was, what's going on? And they like, Babe, you just stop breathing. You know, they have to wake them up so they start breathing because you got to think. If you have a condition like sleep apnea and you're not getting any oxygen to the brain and the brain needs oxygen, guess what's going to happen? Stroke. So it's one of those things as, as I said before, you know, as men of the Lord, this, among other things, should be... Uh, eye openers and things that get your attention to press upon you to live the healthiest lifestyle that you possibly can. You know, granted, if you truly are a man of the Lord, I I understand you're following the dietary laws, but even within the dietary laws, you can still have bad dietary habits, okay? Because fried chicken ain't, uh, is not against the law. But we all know too much of that is a bad thing. So, you know, even with that, you know, I just wanted to present this video to to instill in brothers that we need to take 
care of ourselves. And if you are in a slightly sickly uh, condition to take better care of yourself or take the best possible care of yourself that you can, you know? And that's why, you know, the Lord put it the best way. Ecclesiastes 30. Thirty, I think it starts at ten. Okay, it says the Ecclesiastes thirty and fourteen. It says, well, starting at fourteen, it says, "Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body." And I looked up that word constitution just in the regular uh, uh, English dictionary, and it says. Constitution, the act or process of setting something up or establishing something, the composition or structure of such a thing, its makeup, okay? And this structure is the human body, so it says the composition. Let me look that up, composition. The proportion of different parts to make a whole, the general makeup of a thing or person. Uh, so it's better so as the scripture just said better is the poor being sound and, a, and strong of constitution of physical makeup basically of health than a rich man that is afflicted in his body okay because that's why we have that worldly saying uh Uh, it, if I had a choice to be uh, healthy, wealthy, or wise, I'd rather be healthy, you know, because you may be in a condition where your wisdom or your health can bring you or your wealth can bring you out, okay? And verse 15, it says, health and good state of body are above all gold and a strong body above infinite wealth okay so a healthy mind and a healthy body are above all gold that means do you know how how profound that is think of how rich king solomon was think of how rich the these devils are the rockefellers i mean the rothschild oh, the both of them all the the the, the riches all think of all of their wealth combined. This scripture is saying that a person who has health and good state of body are above all gold and a strong body above infinite wealth. That means there's no amount of money on this planet Earth or in all the planets in, in, in God's mansion that you can put together. There, there's nothing. There's none of those riches that you could combine together that's better than a healthy mind and a healthy body, okay? It says, there is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart, okay? Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness, okay, brothers? So, while... We're in bad Uncle Esau's kingdom, okay, as men of the Lord who are going out on the highways and the byways pushing this truth, okay? We have to do our part. We have to do our best to make sure that we're living as healthy as we possibly can so we can go out on the highways and the byways to push this truth, okay? So if that means that you have to consume less yeast, do that. If it's less fried foods, if it means you having to uh, uh, squeeze in time. And when I mean squeeze in some time, I mean squeeze in time. Because granted, I know a lot of brothers are busy with work and families. But if that means you have to squeeze in like a half an hour to do some exercising or do some stretching, okay, 
These are things that you need to do because these are going to help you stay in a mental and physical uh, uh, level where you can go out on the highways and the byways and preach this word, whether it's the cold, whether it's the rain, whether you're standing on that hard ass concrete, okay? When you're able to keep your health and your mind functioning at a, a certain uh, performance level of, of fitness, okay? It will allow you to be able to have the strength and the durability to go out and be in the uh, on the highways and the byways pushing this truth, okay? Because when you super sickly, you can't be out on the highways and the byways. But when you take the necessary measures within your ability to make sure certain things do not happen to you or you can keep them at bay, you know it's a must that you do it. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm not, as I said before, I'm not saying this to necessarily get on brothers that, you know, may be lacking in the health, but I just want this to be a, a reminder and just something to put in the forefront of your mind to say, hey, you know, hey, the, the, that, that brother's right, you know, I, I do need to, to get a little something going. You know, I'm not saying you got to be, you know, uh, a CrossFit or MMA athlete, but just have your health and your body function at a certain level where you can do the things that you need to do, especially preaching this word. You know, you, you, you got to put your best foot forward. So with that being said, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, the honors to the apostle elders, a great millstone, who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, I want to say Shalom.